Hi folks, Roland Martin here and thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Listen, I'm going to bring you these weekly tips and stuff and today is all about frog fishing. You know I've had a love affair about frog fishing for years. Now here's just a couple examples. These are Spro frogs, a regular bronze-eyed 65 and the, and the uh, popping frog. Now I started fishing with Spro tackle for about 20 years ago and I, I met Dean Rojas and he actually designed and developed this bronze eye frog. We went to California and fished out in a clear lake. He gave me the, the ABCs on just how to cast it and how to retrieve it. And then he came down to Lake Okeechobee. We did another great film on Okeechobee, killed him again on the bronze eye frog. Then since then, this popping frog has really come into being. I got a good friend, Gary Milicevic. I've made a couple films with him. We've caught a lot of six and eight pound bass on, on Lake Okeechobee. It's just a killer deal. And then on top of that, there's a brand new frog, and now a brand new one on the market that I'm going to show you about. It's a, a Tecla buzz frog, and I'm trying to talk the Spro people into making a buzz frog, but that's beside the point. I'll show you the buzz frog as well. Okay, let's get started. Let's take the first frog, for example. Let's take the Bronze Eye 65, the standard frog that I think is so, so cool. It's the one that Dean Rojas first came up with. Let me talk to you about the complement of what you have to have, the tips and the techniques that you need to properly fish this frog for big fish. Now this is basically a big fish situation in the thickest, heaviest cover. I'm talking about big bass, six and eight pounds sometimes, in the middle of the thickest stuff out there. So what you need is a big heavy rod. You need a big flip and stick counter rod. Six and a half to seven and a half foot heavy action, first thing. Second tip. You need a 65 pound braid. Now I know Ish Monroe, the, the top, top pro frogger, uh, again, Dean Rojas, the top pro frogger, they'll all tell you 65 pound test line is what all the pro guys that frog fish all use 65 pound test line. They don't use 50, they don't use 40, they use 65. I'm just telling you, that's, that's what they use. Okay, coupled up with that, I have a big long handle rod and I have this big cushion button I can hold in my side and I have a good 8 to 1 ratio reel. Now this reel is a solace reel and it has a real strong drag. I can tighten that drag down and it's got 20 something pounds, almost 30 pounds of drag. And plus the big handle, this big handle gives me leverage. I can really, really kind of crank it. Okay, let's talk about how I cast it and what I, what I do in the retrieve. Okay, the first thing, the first tip I want to give you about shallow water fishing. If you're frog fishing, the first thing you got to do is be quiet. I mean, I'm telling you, quiet. Put your trolling motor on the lowest speed you got. I, I, I use the weedless propeller. That's a weedless propeller I designed. It's weedless, but it makes noise when it turns. So you're going through all these pads and stuff, it's a couple, three feet deep. You can see how that's only two or three feet deep. But the point is, the fish can hear all that. So you got to be real quiet and drift when you can. Now, I've been here a while, and I think the fish are probably calmed down. And that's the other thing, sometimes I'll pull up to a grass bed and stop and just let everything calm down a little bit. Uh, that's a good tip because if you, be, if you know, see one move in the grass and just stop and just let it calm down, let everything kind of just get back to normal and then make your cast. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to throw in the thickest stuff out there. I'm just going to throw that, that, it's right, you can't even see it. It's in the grass. But I'm going to hold my rod into my side. I'm going to hold it pretty much in a little bit up. See how I'm just easing it along? There, it's coming through the grass now. Coming through the grass, okay? It's coming along. See how it's a little, little hops? It's looking like, looking like a frog. It's hopping like a frog. Coming through the lily pad like a frog. Okay, get ready. Watch this. Go and see the, how it walks the dog? Okay, come out. I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna show you how it walks the dog when it hits open water. Coming out to open water. It's almost to the open water. And here's the deal. Here's what Dean Rojas showed me how to walk the dog. Watch the watch the lure. Back and forth. Back and forth. See how it walks the dog? Does a great job. They'll hit it like that. Now another thing that Dean did is when they when they come out of the package, they get a longer skirt. The skirt's a, about half an inch longer. Dean and I do and all the guys that I know, we always cut about a half to three quarters of an inch off the skirts right here, okay? Okay. Now, squeeze all the water out. And I've got those hooks, they're just super sharp. They're just a, just a 
centimeter off the body. Now, if they're, if they're touching the body, I don't like them touching the body. I like a little teeny bit of gap because that makes them hook up better. When they're up against the body like that, you don't, it's too weedless and sometimes you miss fish. So I like to spread the hooks just a little bit with a good pair of pliers. So that, that's what I've done here. There's a little teeny gap now between the hook point and the body of that frog. Just a little bit, not, not, not much, okay? I tie it with a good Palomar knot. Again, this is 65 pound braid. Okay, let me show you what I do to set the hook. I'm gonna make another long cast in these heavy weeds. Go right back in there, okay. Same kind of deal. Pop it along, little pops. Two and three inches at a time, two or three inches at a time. Two or three inches at a time, two or three inches at a time. Little pop, pop. Watch it when it gets to open water. You'll see it walk the dog. It's walking the dog right there, walking the dog. It's walking the dog. It's walking the dog. That's a good time. Sometimes you can stop it. Sometimes you can stop it right there. Dean will stop it. Nothing hit it, okay. Keep coming to the lily pads. Watch for the weeds to, to move now. Watch for the weeds to move. And a lot of times they'll just suck it in right there. A lot of times these big bass don't hit a frog real hard. They don't crash on it, they suck it down. Some of the biggest fish ever, when they suck it, you think a bluegill hit it. But anyway, I, I get it out here now. Again, I walk the dog right here in this open water. Walk. One okay. Okay, so when I go to set the hook, I got the rod in my stomach. I got, the, I got the rod at a certain angle. The second he goes spoosh, I drop it in within like a second or two. I'm straight out and, and set the hook. And, and, and I'm reeling as hard as I can. Because remember, if you can get to jump on a big six or seven pound bass, if you can turn him towards you, like a big seven or eight pounder, he has a lot of power. And he, if he got his way about it, he could turn and run back that way. But if you set the hook so hard that he's, you're pulling her towards you, he's gonna run towards you. And sometimes he'll just run his way out of a lot of that stuff, and he'll just be zooming at you. So you gotta reel real fast. That's why I like a high speed reel, because so often, when you get the strike and you go whop, you got the fish hook, he's coming at you just as fast as you can. And you just got to reel, just keep up with him. Now, when they really suck it down good, let me tell you what happens. And I got this on camera. You'll see it on, on some of the other video. When the bass take this thing, they suck it down and almost all of them have it in the roof of their mouth. It's a perfect place to hook them. You just don't hardly miss them. When you set the hook right, and you get the right tackle, like Dean Rojas does, and like I do, and like Ish Monroe does, we'll get nine out of 10 strikes on the frog. Now that's an amazing ratio. And you can do it with the frog if you have the right hook complement, you have the right rod complement, and set the hook the proper way. Now let's talk about the popping frog. Sometimes on this, uh, this, this, this popper comes with a three-aught hook. Sometimes I'll change it to a four-aught, but I'll always take a pair of pliers and move and, and spread it out a little bit. Let's, let's take the pliers right now. This is a big, big tip now. Take that hook and spread it out just a little teeny bit and just, there's a little bit of gap now. A little bit of gap, not much, just a little bit of gap. Just a cat of gap between the hook and the body of the hook. Okay, let's try this, bend this one out as well. Okay, just a little bit of gap. There's not much gap, just a, just an eighth of an inch, enough, enough to, to just to get hooked. Okay, that, that's important. You want the hooks out where they can, where it just hooks up better. I'm gonna throw it into the reeds or close to the edge of the reeds like that. Okay, now it's, in, it's right at the edge of the reeds, right at the edge right now. It's right by that little, little stalk of, of reeds. Right. I'm gonna let it sit there till the rings die out. It's kind of like I'm fishing a topwater plug and I'm pop it one time, okay? Nothing hit it, okay? I let it sit there again, pop it again. It's a top water lure. This is all visual action that we're dealing with. Pop it again. I'm ready to set the hook. I got the rod ready to go. Pop it again. Now, he didn't hit it. I pulled it away from that ambush point five or six feet. But he still might be there. So now I'm going to gently pop it back and just kind of cover the open water. And you'll know sometimes after you've got five or ten foot from the, from the spot, you'll know that, well, they're just not gonna hit it like that. So then you can reel it in, if, 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 if that's the deal. Now, sometimes they'll hit it on the way in if there's a lot of hydrilla in the water or underwater grass, but if there's basically just an ambush point, 
and he doesn't hit it right away the first couple pops and then the first five or six feet sometimes I'll just reel it in and cast again I'll throw it a second time okay I'll put back in there that's fine you get you back it's weedless again it's a weedless plug and come right through the reeds right through the reeds okay when it comes out okay it's out and again let it sit there pop it and then you can pop it back now when they set the hook same kind of deal go forward within two seconds hit the hook hard put the rod into it let me show you the third frog real quick and then I'll just uh, we'll just uh, we've covered the whole thing this is the Tecla buzz frog that I'm trying to talk uh, Spro into doing and it's a buzz bait frog watch this it has a tail and this is this is just see it just buzzes the whole time so this is just a cast retrieve float. This is mainly for open water, the edges of thin grass. In other words, I'll take this buzz frog and I'll throw it in little pockets like right over there and just buzz it back. I'll get some great video of them busting this little buzz frog. So that's, a, that's a real good compliment to your line. It's a buzz bait, but it's weedless. In other words, I love buzz bait fishing, but now with the buzz frog, you can use a buzz bait in the heavy cover. Anyway, that's the three kinds of frogs that I use, and I think you'll catch more and bigger fish. These tips are invaluable. Remember that heavy line. Remember that heavy rod. Remember to get those hooks in the right position. Remember to set the hook the right way. Hey, you'll catch a lot of big fish, and you'll enjoy doing it. Hey, thanks for watching. I tell you, thanks for subscribing. Hit that likes button. Just go up there and hit it right now. I really enjoy doing these videos for you. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.